Okay, if you own any Apple device, you're using iCloud, whether you realize it or not. But most people have no idea what's actually going on up here. So let's break iCloud down in seven quick levels and turn it from the black box you blindly trust into one of your most powerful tools. Oh, and we'll save you a ton of storage and money as we go. You see the storage bar drop. But as always, starting with the basics. Because here's what most people get wrong iCloud is not a simple cloud storage service. And I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, it stores my files and photos on a cloud. And you'd be right, but it's not the main point of iCloud and not even its best feature. You see, let's compare it to a simple cloud service like Dropbox. They let you store and share your files and documents. But for Apple, iCloud is designed to keep your information secure, up to date and available across all your devices. Sounds pretty dry. But the point being, it gives you the same experience whether you pick up your Mac, iPad or iPhone. Think of it like this. Every Apple user gets a very generous 5 gigabytes of iCloud storage for free for life. You can buy more storage and we'll get to that, but iCloud then becomes the central brain of your Apple devices, storing all your stuff and syncing it across. And just to drive this home, even if you only own one single Apple device like an iPhone and don't care about all this syncing stuff, iCloud still helps you in two big ways. First, if your iPhone's ever lost or stolen, breaks, you don't lose any data. You can sign into a new iPhone and everything's there even without a backup. And second, you can jump onto iCloud.com from literally any browser on any device and still access your Apple apps. We'll save that for level 6 though because there's way more hiding here than most people think. And on the same note, there's a lot more hiding in your iCloud than you might think, plus a lot of useless stuff that's quietly eating up your precious storage. Let's check it out in the settings app on Mac, iPhone or iPad by tapping your name, iCloud and then saved to iCloud. And sure, we get to the elephant in the room in a sec, so iCloud Photos and Drive, but there's so much more here. You see, all of Apple's baked-in apps sync your content, not just your files and photos, but also contacts, reminders, or even stuff like Apple Pay transactions, Safari history, and health data. Plus, most third-party apps also tap into your iCloud to back up and store your data. Now, you can prevent any app from syncing here, but just for instance, if we do this with a contact app, my iPhone will keep a local copy, but any new contact I add won't show up on my Mac or iPad anymore. What's more, some of iCloud's best features are the ones you barely notice. If I add a password on my Mac, my iPhone instantly knows about it and can fill it out. If I go on a website on my iPhone, it's also in my Mac's Safari history. Plus, with iCloud tabs, I can jump into any website on my iPhone that's already open on my Mac. You get the idea. But here's the kicker. This overview hides a ton of stuff quietly eating up your iCloud storage. If we go back and tap the storage bar, we see every app that still has data sitting in iCloud. And for me, that list is full of apps I haven't opened in years that are not even on my iPhone anymore. So this is by far the easiest place to free up some storage fast. Oh, and trust me, this bar will drop a lot more throughout the video, especially when we tackle the big three, iCloud Backups, iCloud Drive, and starting with iCloud Photos. Because let's get this straight. If you switch on iCloud Photos, your photos and videos move from your iPhone, iPad, or Mac into your cloud. Meaning, you then have one single photo library and can view it from all your Apple devices. This also means that, and this is important, if you delete a photo on let's say your iPhone, it's gone everywhere because it's deleted from your iCloud. Think of iCloud photos like a cinema. Whether you're sitting in the front, the middle or way in the back, you're watching the same movie just from different seats aka your different devices. And if there's a scene missing, it's gone for every seat, 
aka on every device. Now, using iCloud Photos gives you one big benefit. You see, my photo library is 50 gigabytes, but it uses up 2 gigabytes of my iPhone storage. As long as in the iCloud Photo settings, Optimize Storage is switched on, all my full resolution photos and videos live in iCloud, but my iPhone just shows lightweight previews. The second I tap a photo or want to share it, it downloads the full resolution file and later automatically uploads it again to the cloud to free up space on my iPhone. And this is where it gets fun, because Photos is where we can really free up that iCloud storage. Back in iCloud Photo settings, there is a Manage Storage button to help us. Here we can review photos and videos sorted by file size, clear out years of random chat screenshots we don't need anymore, plus what's easiest is automatically merging any duplicates, photos found in your library. And here's the thing, once iCloud Photos clicks, iCloud Drive suddenly makes perfect sense. It's basically documents and files instead of just photos. On iPad and iPhone, you can get to your iCloud Drive through the Files app. On Mac, it's the Finder. So check this out, instead of saving a PDF to my Mac storage, we can save it to a folder I've created in iCloud. And we can see that it instantly starts uploading. Switching over to my iPhone, we can then find it in the Fights app. I can annotate the PDF here and my edits directly sync to my Mac because it's all in one single location on my iCloud. And because we're using iCloud and not the Mac's internal storage, in the iCloud Drive settings, we can check Optimize Storage. The point being, just like with Photos, we can store more documents than the Mac has internal storage. Files you haven't opened in a while get offloaded to iCloud automatically and download to your Mac when you need them. We can also do this manually. Just right click any file and choose Keep Downloaded to force it to stay on your Mac and remove download to free up space again. The file itself stays in iCloud. Just keep in mind, if you delete your file here, it's gone everywhere. At this point, your apps, photos and files all live in iCloud. So you might be thinking, why does iCloud Backup even exist? I mean, you probably already know that your iPhone or iPad can automatically back up to iCloud if you switch it on in the settings. And those backups are big. I mean, just for instance, for my iPhone, it's 4 gigs add on my iPad and we've used up 7 gigabytes of iCloud storage. Now, to make this even more confusing, iCloud Backup does not include your photos or your iCloud Drive files. But again, that's because those already live in iCloud on their own. What iCloud Backup does is save the current state of everything that's on your iPhone or iPad. So things like your messages, notes, call history or Safari data. Plus all the stuff you'd hate to set up again. Your home screen layout, lock screen, wallpapers, settings, basically everything that makes your iPhone feel like your iPhone. The point being, if you buy a new one, you just restore the latest backup and you feel right at home. Though, let's pull up that storage bar again, because here we can save a lot of space. Your current iPhone doesn't just keep stacking up backups, it always overrides the previous one. But old devices don't disappear. So if you've had an iPhone years ago, or an old iPad you don't use anymore, there's a good chance its backup is still sitting in iCloud quietly eating up your storage. So we can safely delete those and just like that, free up some more space. Okay, this is where we step it up because the final two levels are the features 99% of iCloud users never touch. Starting with the iCloud website because this is more powerful than you might think. Now, for starters, iCloud isn't locked to your Apple devices at all. In any browser on any PC, we can go to iCloud.com and you can check emails, edit notes, view photos or download files from iCloud Drive. We can even customize this dashboard, so rearrange the layout and tweak what each tile shows as a preview. Plus, and this is important, if you ever lose an Apple device, you can use Find My on on iCloud.com to track it down. Oh, and while we're on features that could generally save you one day, the iCloud website hides a data recovery section that you won't find on any of your devices, meaning we can restore iCloud Drive, 
bookmarks, contacts or calendars to any previous version. But here's the hard truth. I mentioned earlier that Apple gifts us 5 gigs of iCloud storage for free. But if you actually use iCloud like it's intended, 5 gigs disappears faster than my New Year's resolutions. And yeah, at that point, Apple absolutely wants you to open your wallet and pay the Apple tax for iCloud Plus. Good news is, for most people, the smallest plan is all you need. For $1 a month, we jump to 50 gigs of storage. Plus, we unlock two big features that I actually use every single day. For starters, the iCloud private relay feature tries to keep what you're doing online private. It basically hides your real internet address when you're browsing on Safari, so websites and their trackers don't get to see who you are and where you're from. Speaking of which, with the hide my email feature, instead of giving a website your actual email, you can use iCloud to create a random one that just forwards your messages to your inbox. The website never sees your private email address and if that service starts spamming you with newsletters, you can just kill that generated email. I use a new hidden email address for every single website I register, which means I can even track down which websites have sold or leaked my email address and then do nothing about it. And that's my ultimate guide to iCloud. Oh, here's one for the Notes app. I will see you there. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day.